Yeah. Ooh, it's nasty out there today. Oh boy. Hey, welcome to the closing beat, everybody. Happy, happy Thursday. It's Thursday, man. Thursday, Thursday, Thursday. It's Wine and Wealth Night. So I'm actually going to go through this here today and uh, get you guys updated on everything that's going on. Then I'm going to get out of the way because we've got our Wine and Wealth later and I'm going to blow your mind. I'm not joking. Uh, we're going to do four or five uh, tax tricks, fine print tax tricks that uh, you won't, you won't, uh, you've never heard of, right? So I was thinking last night, um, you know, what, what are some of the things that I remember doing for the wealthy people that, um, you know, could apply? And so I've broken them all down. I'm going to make it real simple. Come hang out with us uh, tonight. And thanks to Jet, uh, we'll actually have some wine available. I, I'm not going to drink the wine tonight, actually. It, it'll be a whiskey and wealth kind of night tonight. So uh, 8 o'clock tonight, if you're one of our clients, you know where to find us. And uh, we'll cover that. We are financial advisors here. We love to teach. We love to just throw something out there and have you go, wait, does that apply to me? Is that, is that something I can do? And then we strategize and figure it out there. So if you need a guy on your side or a couple of guys on your side there, uh, check us out at Jazz Wealth. That's what we're here for. We are happy to help. Um, we've got a um, uh, we got, we got a lower market here today. We'll talk about that in a second. But, oh, I want to point out um, on Instagram. Cody did something on Instagram, right? So there's we can see Cody, but uh, we, we tricked Instagram, right? Yeah, we're fake verified. We, we fake verified ourselves. We, yeah. Tell them what that means there, so they know that oh, we're, we got not, the we're not the hacker. blue check mark on our uh, on our profile picture now, so we were basically verified. Yeah, they wouldn't verify us, so we said, "Well, let's change our icon picture and put the blue check mark on there ourselves." So now you know if you're on Instagram, what is there two fake accounts? It sounds good. I was just making sure. We All right, check us out. Yeah, sorry. There's two fake accounts, or is it one? No, it's just one fake account. Just All one. Right. So the other one that has the logo off center and everything, that, that, that is not us. We have the blue check mark now, even though Instagram didn't want to give us the blue check mark. Little boogers. Anyways, uh, so let's talk about the, uh, the markets here because uh, we got our pullback. Remember, we were talking about pullbacks are viable, right? We just need a pullback. And so if you look over here, you've got uh, sideways. We've been boring, right? We've been talking about a few things over the last couple of days. We finally get our pullback ahead of what's going to be a rather interesting day tomorrow, right? So we've got the inflation numbers coming out tomorrow. We're expecting 8.2% year over year versus 83 is where it sits right now. Uh, fun facts for you. I put in here so you'd have something to look at or something to think about. Uh, in the last 24 months, so going back 24 months now, there's only three reports that inflation came in weaker than expected. We want that. We actually want it to come in weaker than expected. Well, you know, over the last uh, two years now, it seems inflation has been creeping up. Although if you ask some people, they would say it's only since the war started, but that's, that, that's definitely not true. Uh, so anyways, three uh, came in that were weaker than expected. Uh, June 10th, 2020, uh, November 12th, 2020, and September 14th, 2021. I went back and looked. Every single one of those days were lower. So inflation was lower and the stock market was lower. Over the last two years, actually, when the CPI number came in as expected or higher, meaning inflation was up, the S&P really didn't have a horrible day. The median loss was 0.08%. So if that happens tomorrow and our inflation number is the same or slightly higher, I think we're going to fall a little bit more than that. But nonetheless, we got a lot of our sell off here today. It was also only positive half of the time. So you got a coin flip, basically, of no change, right? If inflation's the same or higher. If it's lower, then the market was already lower on those days. There's only three times I could use. So it's not a lot of data, right? Uh, the t uh, tech sector and financials were the worst performing sectors. It lost about 1% on the day whenever. Uh, the um, inflation numbers came in as expected or a little bit higher. Energy and utilities were the best performer with 1% and a half a percent average gain, median gains, respectively there. And so uh, buckle up, man. You know, we, we, got, uh, we got ourselves an interesting day there. Now, if you look at the stock market, uh, today we sold off, and I'll tell you, it broke down out of the range, and that's where the real acceleration started. So it was in the afternoon. Check it out. So as soon as we broke the lows of this range, you can see it clean as day on this five-minute chart. Every bar is five minutes. So we got five minutes, five minutes. Oh, no, we broke. Look at the volume in the background. Just takes off. People are saying, oh, we broke down. I want out of this. 
that's fine. Let them out, right? We need that pull back here. And so that's what that's what wrapped us up all the way back down to the 20-day moving average today, that acceleration throughout the afternoon. We're now down about 16% year-to-date energy. Uh, oh, wait. I believe energy was the worst performing sector of the day. That's fine. That's fine. Let it let it come on down. No, energy was not the worst sector of the day. Lost 2%. But otherwise, every single sector today lost 1% or more. That kind of a day. Broad across the board selling. There was no particular area of the market that caused us to move lower. Nine of 11 sectors actually lost more than 2%. And communication services lost 3%. So tech and communication services were the weakest. So looking around the market, whether you're looking at small cap growth, small cap index, large cap growth index, mid cap, whatever you want to look at, cap uh, was all lower by 2% or more today. So broad, 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 broad selling across the day, uh, across the uh, markets here today, uh, going into a pretty impressive number tomorrow. Uh, hopefully a pretty impressive number. Now, if we look at the S&P uh, throughout the day uh, in, in terms of anything that sticks out, cruise lines and uh, casinos. So Carnival Cruise Lines almost made new lows. Norwegian Cruise Lines, same thing. Uh, Royal Caribbean, the same thing. These guys got battered today. Those are 9% losses across the board there. And then when you go into something like a Wynn Resorts, Las Vegas Sands, they lost 5%. Anything economically sensitive like Expedia.com lower on the day. Uh, so really, really tough there. On the way up there, uh, you've got Pool Corp. We happen to own this. We got a great cost, uh, a great average cost on this one. But uh, Pool Corp it was actually higher on the day. Anything that a, a a pool guy or a pool store would need, these they get them from here. I mean, they're they're massive. Uh, Dollar General, anything that would be more uh, less economically sensitive, those managed to hang on today. And I'll point out Lowe's and Costco and, and Home Depot, they tried. Uh, it wasn't the greatest of days there. They started off a lot stronger, but sold off throughout the day. Uh, and then I don't really need to point out every stock that was down today because we'd be here all day. Uh, Home Depot, Costco, Dollar General, NXPI Semiconductors, Fortinet, maybe a couple others. That was it. They were pretty nasty days overall. Uh, for for basically every single stock, again broad selling. So there was no there was no individual reason, no news that says, oh my gosh, tech was down today and that dragged down the market. Just was not the case. Uh, the Nasdaq lost two percent on the day. We you probably you probably saw that already. Uh, big weakness there. Uh, same thing. Here's your pullback, or at least the start of the pullback, right? Uh, so in the Nasdaq today, uh, horrible. I mean, some really, really tough losses. Moderno, uh, Moderna, Pinduo, Duo, some of the Chinese stocks pulled back because there's some issue there with uh, Alibaba and maybe them having one of their products go public. Match.com, hey, what's going on there? Netflix down 5% on the day, just a little bit. Uh, well, not a little bit. That's a lot for them. Baidu, semiconductors, all of them were weak besides NXPI semiconductors. I didn't catch the news there. If there was any, uh, they managed to see a little volatility, and that's about it. Uh, moving along, we got the Russell 2000 pulling back as well. Not a big deal so far. Bitcoin only up 15 points, uh, right around 30,000. It just won't get out of its own way uh, for that. Lots of volatility right there, but I guess less than you've seen in the past. Uh, good news is crude oil pulled back. Bad news is it was a half a percent. Wait, what was that doing? Half a percent. We're staring at five plus dollars a gallon around here, man. And nobody really cares uh, as far as anybody that could do anything. Uh, like I said, every single sector was lower on the day. And so that's really all I have for you. I don't, there's no need to go through everything. Broad sell off on the day and all eyes turn to tomorrow morning at 830. Get up early uh, because that's, that's what we're all going to be focused on. That will drive the action tomorrow because other than that, you have just changes in the S&P. Uh, you've got a, uh, some oil numbers coming out for uh, rig counts. And that's it. There's nothing else there. Uh, so let's take a look at something here real quick. Got something different for you. Let's pretend. I want to give you a way to scan for ideas. So this is a real thing. Uh, Doug, if you're out there, let me know you saw this. Um, so client says, we own a stock, hadn't, have had it for a long time, uh, in a utility company. We're just curious, is there a better utility company for us to look at or maybe one we could add to? And I thought that was rather unique because it's not something that people usually focus on. The utility sector is not usually that exciting. So what I did is I said, well, I've got to show this guy a way, show him if there's a better utility stock. So I'm going to go over a few things here and you could apply this to anything you'd like or any other sector or however you want to do it. So here we go. 
the uh, client was in PEG. That's the ticker symbol that they own and have owned. What I did is I put the market cap here. And I said, okay, well, let's look at the current dividend yield um, only for PEG. And then let's look at the volatility range. And then let's look at the 15-year return. Since they own this stock for a long time, I'm going to say, well, they're probably going to own something else for a long time as well. So by using just these metrics, and by all means, this is not the only way to do it. But if we just use these metrics, what I need to show is a higher yield with lower or the same volatility and higher or the same returns. Why would we offer him something worse, right? So as I look up here, what I did is I kind of sorted and made this you know, more interesting, but let's try something here. So if I say, uh, well, let's pick a name that he might know, Con Ed. Maybe a lot of you know Con Ed if you're in the Northeast there. So, okay, it's about the same size company market cap wise. They pay a little bit better dividend. Uh, overall, the yield's a little bit higher, but more volatility and less return. Now, you guys don't often look at volatility and think of that as something that, that's meaningful, right? You're looking at PE ratios and technical breakdowns and stuff. But if you have to hold a stock, don't you want to hold the least volatile stock with the highest total return, meaning dividend and growth? Why not, right? You can be picky. There's, there were 75 different utility companies in the U.S. that we could pick from. So there's no way I would mention that one to him. Over here, this is, uh, well, we've got uh, South Jersey is the, uh, on this list anyways, is the least volatile stock. So I go, okay, he's going to get himself a 3.5% yield at the moment. He's going to get 11.6% uh, in terms of total range or volatility. And a 15-year return, is it more? Annualized? Is it bigger? Yeah, it's bigger. Okay, so that's a, that's one that goes on the board. That's something we can work with. Another one we could work with is maybe OGE. I don't I don't know if this is interesting to this person, but we could say it's a four percent yield. It's a touch more volatile, but it pays for itself. So you're for holding on to a little bit more wild of a bronco. You're getting the annualized returns to do it. Right. So other than that, you really wouldn't pick any other stock. Why would you say? I'll take a slightly higher yield for, for something that's much more volatile uh, and gives us basically a, a, just a couple more percent in returns. You might be okay with that. I don't know. Maybe that's your thing. But I want to present something where he doesn't go, holy crap, what'd you get me into? This thing is wild as can be. You promise these returns are going to be good? I don't know if they're going to be that good. So I want something that's very, very common. So most of you would do that. You would say, all right, higher yield, higher returns, lower volatility. Okay, that sounds good. Let's go the other way. What if we had a lower yield, lower volatility, but higher total return? Would you be willing to do that? So we take the same symbol, we put it on top this time. It's the same data. There's no change here. We say, okay, we'd be willing to accept less volatility, lower yields for a, a larger total return. So for example, right here, your eye goes, uh, nice source. Okay, that's basically the same yield, give or take, depending on the day. Uh, we've got more volatility and a pretty decent return in terms of uh, comparing the two. Well, it's not lower volatility. So you may say, ah, nope, that one doesn't fit. You go to the next one, PNM. So well, lower yield, lower volatility, but lower return, right? It's a slower, sleepier stock overall. We wouldn't accept that one there. That doesn't work. Uh, Eversource down here, we've got lower yields, almost the same volatility for a little bit better return. So a slight uptick in volatility for a slight uptick in returns. Maybe that's, maybe, maybe that's worthwhile to them. We wouldn't choose something like Ameren because it's a half, more than a half percent lower yield, a uh, little bit more volatility, but we're, we're basically doing the same thing here for less return, right? So right there, we've got three stocks to go, hey, Mr. Doug, Doug's the client. Um, here's three to look at. Now, we don't have to look at the rest. We can look at those three and go, what do we like about them? Is there anything fundamentally that we can talk about that it's more attractive? Is there some reason he maybe doesn't want to invest in one of those? Uh, is there a market cap issue where they're too small, like, like Jersey, the, the, the one that we showed you a second ago? Well, that's a, four, that's a $4 billion company versus a $34 billion company. Maybe, he, maybe there's a volume issue, right? So there's so many things to think about. Start filtering by what you're interested in first, get a real small list, and then say, okay, now I only have to research three companies instead of 74, because he already owns one, right? So it's a, just a different way to look at it. Um, and so Doug, if you saw this today, that was for you. Let me know that you saw this, otherwise I'll be emailing you there. But uh, pretty interesting, huh? In an otherwise not interesting sector. 
Anyways, let's move on here because we got a wine and wealth tonight, and I'm not joking. I'm going to go over some stuff that you have never, ever heard of before. And you know I don't tease, man. If those of you that are not clients and you're like, ah, oh, little booger, he's, he's, look at him teasing me. I don't do that. If I say I'm bringing the goods, I'm bringing the goods, and clients can attest to that. One new high today. Um, well, that's interesting. Yeah, it did change, didn't it? The new highs is... Uh, it's a different thing. Anyways, uh, one new high. It was it was Devin. I just I remember it in my head there. Uh, so it was just Devin. It poked a new highs the energy company and it pulled back. Um, there were 15 new lows. REITs dominated the list. In fact, if we look over at REITs today, uh, they lost 2.3 percent. That's a it's a rough day uh, for REITs overall. Uh, but let's take a look. Uh, so we got Health Peak. Oops. There we go. Health Peak broke to new lows. I pointed this one out because it's really extended to the downside, selling off a little bit more aggressive. Um, now, REITs are tricky. Careful. REITs, you think, oh, real estate. No, they're not all real estate. They're all very specialized real estate. Most of them are very specialized retail comp uh, real estate companies. So, for example, Health Peak is focused on ALFs, uh, healthcare properties, things like that. That's their forte. That's what they focus on. So, you're not investing in apartments. Right, so you can't just buy this and go. It's a REIT. I get my dividend. This is great. No, no, healthcare down here in Florida. You're gonna find a lot of the ALFs. Alexandria Real Estate did make new lows as well. That's uh, same thing. Just kind of extended, kind of interesting there. Uh, Boston Properties very extended as well. Broke down under a hundred dollars. Very extended. I would use this maybe in our research site to see how often, when it sells off so aggressively, does it continue to sell off? Uh, Vernado Real Estate fresh breakdown there. Uh, these guys are like, th these are the fancy pants ones. Uh, so they, they're kind of funny actually. So they like, uh, to have like the property in Manhattan. They've got a lot of them actually. The properties in San Francisco, the big, big high dollar properties, Boston, Chicago, things like that. Um, they do office space. They do residential space, grocery space. They're even the people that do the sign it. You ever been down Times Square and you see the signs on the buildings? That's them. They own the buildings. They own the signs. They sell the signs. In fact, in March, which is the last update we have, they made $4 million off the signs. Now, these are fancy signs. The screens are moving all over the place. But if you ever wondered who does that, uh, well, there you go. Lesson of the day there. Uh, so that's them. Uh, and then off trap topic, Dustin, stay focused here. Essex, also a fresh breakdown there. These are, if you're in California... Uh, or, or Washington State, uh, you've probably heard of them. They, they're apartment complexes. This is a true apartment com uh, complex play. It's just very regional. It's focused in California there. So um, I would say Vernado is the only one that I pointed out today that's pretty diverse uh, in what they do. Anyways, uh, stocks in the news. Let's take a look here. Uh, if you're trying to find Facebook, you're going to need to type in the ticker symbol M-E-T-A because now they're called Meta. So from now on, it's going to be hard to get rid of that and not say Facebook, but Meta is the new ticker symbol. That did take place today, so you won't see if you type in Facebook, nothing. They got nothing. They're gone. Uh, anyways, uh, Five Below comes out with earnings uh, here today. That's that comp uh, store. It's like Dollar General, but it's $5 General, I guess. Everything's $5. Uh, better than expected earnings. Uh, they were a little bit cautious going forward. Um, however, they're in that discount space, so they didn't get whacked as much as everybody else did. I didn't look much deeper into it. Uh, personally, I ran out of time. The day just went by real quick. Uh, Tesla says our China production has actually tripled in May versus uh, uh, what they saw in April. So good for them. Uh, they are ramping that up like crazy. And speaking of electric cars, you got Neo here. This is a real easy one. So the the headline thing to say is Neo reports better than expected earnings on inline revenues and lowers their Q2 sales guidance. All right. Yeah. What? How boring is that? Really simple. I'll break it down for you. Neo down seven and a half percent here today. They deliver just over twenty five thousand cars. Good for them, right? So they deliver over twenty five thousand cars, sign contracts to build new facilities and all that stuff. Anyways, twenty five thousand cars. They bring in one and a half billion dollars. A little bit more than that in U.S. dollars. So they bring in one and a half billion dollars, uh, but they lose money on the one one half billion. They actually lost 13 cents more than expected, something like that. Uh, so they say next quarter, remember I just said lowered their guidance. Well, the, what the words were is they said, we expect to deliver between 23,000 and 25,000 cars. Hmm. You just delivered more than 25,000 cars and you couldn't make a profit on that. That's understandable. They got to make a lot of cars. 
and you're telling us that next quarter you're going to deliver the same or less cars, we, know, we now know they're not going to make a, there's no way they're going to make a profit. And they weren't going to anyways. They've got to do, you know, they've got to do almost three times as many cars before they'll make a profit. So that's why the stock was down. It's as simple as that. They lowered guidance. We already know what they did. What they did compared to what they expect to do is less. They couldn't make money on what they already did, which was more. Therefore, they're not going to make any money. See, we can just simplify this whole financial thing. Uh, Signet Jewelers. Ooh, you people out there. Well, not so much in the U.S., by the way. So outside the U.S., there. so uh, let's say it this way. Uh, Signet, the majority of their business is here in the States. 90% of their business is here. 10% and growing is, is outside the United States. That part of the business outside the United States, uh, overall sales were up 91%. What are you doing? You're buying the, the diamonds and whatnot, right? Huge. It's only 10% of their revenue, but still huge growth out there. Uh, so they were excited by that and they said, mm, we're going to buy back more shares. Our shares are trading at a discount. We're going to spend $500 million of hard-earned money of people that buy these big diamonds and stuff. And we're going to buy back our shares. This is going to be great. That's what happened with Signet. Anyways, uh, that's all I got for you here today. I will take your questions if you happen to have any. Otherwise, I'm going to get ready for Wine and Wealth tonight. What do the rich do? What is that fine print in the tax code? All that little stuff that you read and you get all sleepy and stuff. I don't get sleepy. I get excited. I'm going to share four, possibly five different things that you have never heard of that you can do, that you don't have to be rich to do. just takes a little bit of effort. And if we're saving money, let's take the damn effort. Anyways, uh, let's see what's going on here. Any questions? You like Neo, but it's got to be $2.50. So you're shopping. So you got a little ways to go, right? Yeah. Uh, I saw the thing about that. There's a movie called What is a Woman that's a big deal. You seen that, Cody? Called, called What is a Woman? It's called What is a Woman? No. Oh. I saw it on a social media. Some I don't know who made it or whatever, but they just went around asking what is a woman. And apparently like 40 million people watched it and like, oh, all right. It's a documentary of some kind. I don't know. That's that's tough. Yeah. I don't know. I, somebody's making some money on that movie, yeah. right? You get that kind of views. It was a Netflix maybe? I don't know who it was. Anyways. I don't know. Uh, let's say... Um, you got a lot of people uh, forecasting recessions. I tell you, if gas price gas prices are going to do it, if we can't do something about gas prices, which we're not going to. Remember yesterday, the White House says we're not doing anything about it. Like suck it up. So that's their honest response. So uh, if gas prices can't come down, that does eventually take us down. Yeah. The studio lighting looks good today. Oh, nice. Because we moved one light, maybe, huh? I like it. Couldn't pass on some Intel today. Oh, yeah, you got your dis uh, discount there, yeah. Swamp Rat's a standard deduction. I don't know. I believe it. <laughs> uh, what about Berkshire Hathaway? What about it? Hmm? What about that sucker? You like the discount? You like the pullback? You're, you've been stalking it? You've been watching? That's what we used to say. Stalking a stock. Right? Just looking for your buy there? I don't know what you're asking about, though. You want to know how to ask for a raise? You ain't getting paid enough, man. <laughs> Let me know if how it goes. I mean, I'll, I'll ask the same thing. Yep, Louis got his hat on, man. Yeah. Oh, that looks familiar. It was the Daily Wire. That that sounds familiar. Yeah. I think you're probably right. If that's the one I was on TikTok or something. If that's the yellow. I got a yellow logo or something. Hey, if inflation comes in higher than expected, will we get hammered tomorrow? Well, now you know the stats. It's not a lot of data, but the stock market um, averages a slight loss on days where inflation is the same or higher and um, ends up trading lower anyways when the market is, or when inflation comes in less than expected. Yeah. That's a fun saying there. A recession is when your neighbor loses their job. A depression is when you lose your job. I like that. Oh, cool. Well, thanks for the update there. It was the Daily Wire, but I just found it fascinating the amount of people that watched it. I'm like, okay, all I see is dollar signs there. I've, I've never seen it. Yep. 
Uh, hey, Dustin Ramsey posted a video today and said he is. It, this is the best time to buy a house. What are your thoughts? The like out of all times there's ever been, this is the best time. I don't know the context of that, but is it? Is it really? Do, does anybody here think it's the best time to buy a house? I probably not in Florida. If you lived in any populated area in Florida, I think you'd probably disagree with that. Uh no. <laughs> this you're trying to get me fired up, man. The old Nancy Pelosi. I don't know, man. I don't know how that's something. Anyways, uh, let's see here. So I'm gonna get ready here for tonight. I appreciate you guys hanging out with us. We will see you later. Get your drink on with us, whatever you like. Bring it to the class. Uh, we're going to talk a little bit, and uh, I will see you then. So for the rest of you, enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, we will see you when we see you. And uh, adios. <laughs>